Good afternoon. Well, it's afternoon for me. I, I don't know when you're going to watch this recording, but it's afternoon for me. Uh, my name is McHugh. If you've never met me, you might have seen my name somewhere or heard my name. Um, I'm the 101 lab coordinator. So I get to coordinate the Friday lab missing lab because um, you guys won't be attending actual lab for, for week six um, because Veterans Day. Gosh. I don't know why they didn't do it on a Monday. A whole lot of opinions about it, but um, so if you have a Friday lab, you will be watching this instead of going to actual lab. And there'll be some caveats because I know that kind of seems unequitable and kind of unfair that you still have to do the lab, but it's a really cool lab. Um, I really, really like lab six. Um, it's our first hazards lab. So that will lead into next week's uh, hazards two lab. And you get to do some really, really cool activities. We get to look at volcanoes. Um, and I know a lot of people, at least in my lab section, were really excited to learn about volcanoes. So we'll get to do a little bit of that today. Um, and there are some caveats, which we have hopefully spoken to you about already, um, or at least put in a uh, an announcement. This isn't going to be worth full points um, because you won't be attending real lab. So it's only going to be worth 30 points instead of 50. And you'll have two weeks to do it. And you won't have to do activity three this week. We will do it um, week eight for week eight lab topography, but it's because it's literally the coolest part of this lab. And I'm so bummed you guys don't get to do it this week. It's our stream table, which if you walk into the 101 room and you look in the back and you see that big sand box in the back, that's our stream table. And this is the week we get to play with it um, and we don't get to. So I've talked to the safety manager, the geology safety manager, Ben, and he has agreed to set it up so we get to play with it on week eight. So we'll get to play with it. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna have a great time. Um, and you're gonna have a great time with this lab. Okay, so let's talk about what we'll be doing because this week you'll be doing, you'll be working with a program that you've not worked with before. So that's the only super fun thing you'll get to deal with. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through what that will entail. Um, first things first, let's start off with our, with our normal. There you go. From the beginning. These are my children. Many of you have seen them already. And if you thought you'd go a whole week with without seeing my babies, you were wrong. Or listening to the sound of my melodious voice. You're welcome. You get it in this in this capacity now. Uh, these are my children. This is what it's like to eat in my household. If you are wondering, either on the couch or in my bed, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This is what it looks like. Harry's on the left here. He's the fuzzy one. And then Henry, my perfect, beautiful daughter, is right here. She's getting surgery right now. So this is how I'm distracting myself. It's good surgery. It's fine. She's just getting teeth removed. Um, and everything's going well so far, but my poor baby. Um, okay, so today we're going to be learning about hazards. Um, we're going to be looking at something called LIDAR, which we're going to talk about here in a second. We're going to be looking at the different hazards that entail the four elements, water, earth, fire, and air, and then glaciers. So LIDAR is essentially a satellite imagery that is super, super, super precise. Um, and it's a relatively new te technology. Geologists love it. Uh, glaciologists, structural geologists, um, tectonic geologists, anybody that works with surface geology loves LIDAR. And you're gonna see why in a second. It just stands for light detection and ranging. And what it does is it strips away all the vegetation. So all that's left is like literally all of the little tiny details of the geology. Um, so these are mountains, but um, if you're to look at this mountain with the vegetation, it might be hard to see some of these faults, some of these um, crevices and valleys because of the vegetation. Um, so LIDAR is a really, really cool technology. We get to play with that a little bit today. We're going to be looking at volcanic hazards, um, particularly the volcanoes in this area in Washington state. There are five volcanoes in Washington state. We live under the shadow of one of the most beautiful volcanoes, in my opinion, Mount Baker. Um, and she uh, she's really cool. So she actually gets the highest precipitation out of any of the Cascade volcanoes. Um, the Cascade Volcano is ranging all the way down from Northern California to Southern BC. So it extends a really, really far distance, but she gets the highest annual precipitation, which just means she gets the highest rainfall or snowfall. Um, that doesn't mean she keeps that. She does lose it throughout the year. Um, but you can see if you look out and if she's visible, she gets really, really thick glaciers and she's already getting some glaciers already, which is awesome. 
Um, so she's great for skiing, ski season. Yay, it's coming up. Um, but we're going to look at other hazards like ashes, lahars, lava, and landslides. Um, the most prevalent hazard, especially in this area, is actually the lahar. And if you've not heard this word before, um, it's kind of a weird word. I don't, it took me a while for this word to like wrap around in my brain, lahar. Um, but essentially all it is, is when you think about, especially with our volcanoes and how, um, and how heavy they are with glaciers, right? There's a lot of glaciers on our volcanoes. So what happens if that volcano erupts? Those glaciers are going to melt and they're going to melt fast. Um, and when they melt, they careen down the side of the mountain and into our river valleys and they're going to take everything with them they're going to take mud they're going to take sand they're going to take dirt um and if if the volcano is erupting it's also going to take ash right and they're going to flow through the, the river valleys flood those river valleys they go really really fast these lahars um and they're really really hot because they just melted a bunch of water um so they're really dangerous but one of the most dangerous aspects about lahars actually is when they end up in their end spot, um, they essentially cement, like uh, because it's ash, the the material that cements in place is so fine that when the lahar stops in the place where it's gonna stop, it turns into cement. So it can be really dangerous in that capacity too. But again, they're really fast. They can carry anything with them. Um, the water levels are gonna rise. So uh, when Mount St. Helens erupted, I know my parents were a little freaked out because it was gonna one of the lahars from St. Helens was gonna go under a bridge. And there was a lot of speculation about whether or not the lahar was gonna knock the bridge down because it was gonna carry trees. They knew it was gonna carry trees and logs and stuff. Um, and ended up not knocking the bridge down, it was fine, but it was pretty close. So you're gonna look a lot about lahars today. Oh, I have a YouTube where you can watch it. I guess I don't, I'll copy and paste it somewhere so you can actually, because that's not helpful. Um. Types of volcanoes, uh, this isn't super important for today, but I will say that all of the Cascades, mostly Cascades are composite volcanoes. So this is what we're kind of looking at here. Activity three, so again, this is the activity you won't be doing today. I've deleted it entirely off of um, the Canvas quiz, but we'll be looking at this uh, in week eight. We're gonna be looking at streams. Landslides, uh, this is an important topic today. And we're gonna be looking at Oso. And if you're not familiar with Oso, it's a little town in Washington that um, is east of us in the Cascades and it's south of us. So it's between us and Seattle, but in the Cascade range a little bit. Um, and I think in, oh gosh, I should have written this down before I started this. Oh wait, I can pause, hold please. Okay. Stop okay, so um, eh, I'm paused here, but hopefully this will speed up. Um, so I thought it would be nice to bring it up to here is also do, 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 do. Um, so here's where Bellingham is. This is where we are. If you drive down I-5, this is Everett. Also is just east of essentially Arlington and Mount Vernon. Um, so here's where Oso was, and it happened in 2014, um, and 43 people were killed. So I wanted to make that uh, clear before I continue. And the reason we're looking at Oso in particular, not only because it's a Washington landslide, um, but uh, it was especially tragic because um, five years prior to this landslide that happened in 2014 um, that killed 43 people, Five years prior to that, there was another landslide in that same area. And geologists were like, hey, this is problematic. Maybe we shouldn't build more houses here. And, you know, people that make money off of houses were like, no, nah, it's fine. The landslide already happened. We'll be OK. And then 2014 happened. Um, it was big enough that Obama declared it a national emergency. I remember that. My parents and I actually drove through the wreckage after, like, I don't know, a week after it happened. Um, and it was like, 10 feet of dirt on either side of the road. It was horrifying. So uh, you get to look at landslides and sort of the hazards that are involved, especially in this area with that. And finally, you're gonna look at glaciers. And this is this is my favorite. This is what I'm doing my thesis on. Um, and we're gonna look at how the glacier, uh, the last glacial maximum, which is about 20,000 years ago, how that sort of scoured out the area um, near us and around us. So that'll be, this is gonna be a fun, 
sort of, we call this the kitchen sink lab because it sort of encapsulates a lot of different topics, but it's going to be fun. Okay, so here are some things. You have a different Canvas quiz than the other lab sections, the Tuesday through Thursday labs. Um, because I had to get rid of some of the points, I got rid of activity three entirely. So you're welcome to do this lab in, a, in your tangible lab packet. I know I have a lot of students that like to write it out before you put it in Canvas, that's fine. What I will say is most of these questions are actually essay questions. So it's not a whole lot of um, multiple choice. So it might just be easier to do the Canvas quiz, but it's whatever your heart tells you. I don't care. Um, I just don't want you to waste a whole lot of time if you don't need to. So you have a lab six hazards under your quizzes. Um, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say about that. And you're gonna start off here. So you're going to be using a new program that you haven't used before, which is why I wanted to make this video because in the past, this has been, the lab itself isn't difficult. And what I want to preface this lab with is don't overthink these questions. These are not difficult questions. I don't need you to answer with paragraph upon paragraph for these questions. Most of these most of these questions will take like one or two sentences to answer appropriately, and I am happy with that. The biggest problem with this lab is this program. And it's a really cool program, but it does take a second to get used to. So you're gonna be using the Washington Geology Portal. You can click on this link. It is in the first little tab in your quiz. It should work. I'm gonna triple check it works before I send this out. But if for some reason it doesn't, what you can do is literally just Google Washington Geology Portal. Do, do, do. It's gonna be this first tab. And you're gonna to come to this. You're going to click on the state. You have to click on it, the, the Geologic Information Portal. And it will take you, hopefully, come on buddy. Ah. There you go, to a magical new tab that looks like this. So because this is a hyperlink, there's no downloads. It's not like Google Earth Pro. You don't have to download any files for this. Everything's already here. And if something funky is happening, uh, my best advice for you is when in doubt, just refresh, just refresh it, right? Nothing's going to happen. You're not going to lose anything. You're not going to gain anything. It'll just sort of reset itself um, if you're super confused. So this is what it comes to. Let me bigify this. Hold on. Boop, boop, boop. Um, and there are a couple different things that you'll have to do. Uh, it's going to get you to this screen, but the first activity actually wants you to go to LIDAR. Um, I mean, read the pre-lab. I know how much you all love reading the pre-lab and how super detailed you are with reading the pre-lab. I'm very proud of you. Um, so you're going to read through this. It wants you to turn on the LIDAR first. So we're going to turn on the LIDAR after I figure out which tab I want, this one. So LIDAR is going to be this layer. So each one of these tabs essentially are called layers. And that's important because this bottom layer is going to be hiding at the bottom. Think about it like a cake, right? Um, if it's in the bottom layer, you have to get rid of all the top layers to be able to see the bottom layer. So to do that, because LIDAR is on and you're like, I don't see LIDAR, Mickey, that's not LIDAR. You have to unclick all of the layers above it. And some of these layers have what I, what I call sub layers. It doesn't matter if the sub layers are clicked. I don't care. We want the big layer unclicked, okay? So make sure that all of the big layers, the main layers are unclicked when you wanna click on another layer below it, okay? So we have LIDAR clicked and I can't see Washington. So down here is your table of contents. I can get rid of that real quick. Here's your LIDAR. So here's what LIDAR looks like, it's gray. Um, but that's sort of helped the visualization of what's going on. Um, the first question in your lab asks, investigate the geology and topography. Remember, do not overthink these questions. They're not gonna be difficult questions. Um, topography, when you hear that word, uh, we haven't quite gotten to topography lab, but when you hear that word, I want you to consider uh, elevation essentially. So topography is the elevation of the area. It is the, uh, visualization of this area. So we're going to scroll into Bellingham. And I think it's kind of tricky because it doesn't really label the names. Oh, look, Bellingham, look at that. If you so desire, this I don't know if this makes this easier or, or harder, you can click on these three little clicky thingies here. 
Oh, just kidding. Let's do it on this one. There we go. And you're going to scroll down the transparency if you want. I don't actually think that helps, but if you really want to see through it, you can. Um, and now you can see where Bellingham is. So if you want to go a little more transparent to make it a little easier to see, that's how you do that. Okay, let me get rid of that again. Let's go into Beeham. Boop, boop, boop. Uh, sorry, my computer is being a little slow today. Uh, with this program, um, a couple things about this program. First of all, I feel like they changed this program, I don't know, every six months. So going through this is going to be really helpful because I already noticed some things they've changed that aren't in your lab. Um, it's nothing dramatic. Don't panic. And I'm going to walk you through everything. Uh, the other thing is I we have had this site crash before when too many people are using it. So if it crashes, you might have to come back in just a little bit. It shouldn't, but just a forewarning. Okay, here's Bellingham. Here's Bellingham Bay. Here's Lummi Island. Here's Lummi Nation. We are actually here. So this is, um, oh my God, the uh, Arboretum. Thank you. Sea Home Hill, Arboretum. This is our little spot here. So we're located here, but it's asking about Bellingham in total. So what I want you to think about with topography is, is it hilly? Is it flat? Um, what kind of mountain mountainous terrain do you see? What are you noticing about this LIDAR? Um, so that's your question one. Boop, 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 boop. There's some other questions you're going to look at. And then it's going to ask you to get to the 250K surface geology. We are going to go back. Ah, I keep looking up. So we're on LIDAR right now. Let's go back to our table of contents. We are going to actually unclick LIDAR. We're going to come back to LIDAR. Um, but in this very moment, it wants us to look at the geology of it. So we're going to go back to surface geology. But as you can see, uh, the go-to is the 500. So we're going to unclick 500 and we're going to click 250K. It's just a different level of... It's really hard today, you guys. Um... Oh my God, the word is... It's fine. It's, it's going to be a little bit easier to use the 250 than it is the 500. And what this is, is we're looking at the different geologic units that make up Bellingham and they're separated out by these black lines. This was actually one of the things I saw they changed. Um, so it might look different in your canvas page, but essentially what we want. So we've clicked on this unit. This unit is now highlighted in red. We wanna scroll down to the, all the way to the bottom. Um, I, so they changed the name which drives me crazy. So it says here, includes the chuck and up formation. That's gonna mean nothing to you. I don't care about that. What I want you to think about, for some reason, it is now called continental sedimentary rocks. Or sorry, it's called last edited date. But what I want to see is continental sedimentary rocks. So when it when the question asks, what does this, what is this unit? I want you to say, I don't even care if you say continental, sedimentary rocks, right? We know the three different rock types. We know sed rocks, igneous rocks, metamorphic rocks. You know sedimentary rocks now. That's what I want you to, to take away from this. And then when it says, what do those make up? This up here under create a date, I don't know where the fuck it says that. Um, you have a whole bunch of words, some of which you've never seen before. Feldspathic, I've never seen that word before, or if I have, I've pushed it way back in the back of my brain. Um, and biotite rich with minor musk, but I don't care about that. You're gonna find the words that you recognize that you have seen before. Oh, you recognize, ah, that's not what I wanna do. You recognize sandstone and conglomerate and mudstone and maybe some coal seams. Love that. That's all I need when it asks for a description of what is in that rock, okay? So it's gonna say, what is this rock type? Sedimentary rocks. What is the description? Sandstone, conglomerate, mudstone, and coal seams. Love that answer, crushed it, okay? And I think there's a couple questions that ask you um, essentially to name a unit and describe it. That's all I need, okay? Don't get crazy. Um, what I will say is please type it out in your own hands. I don't want any copy and pasting here, okay? That's really important. You're not going to retain that information if you just copy and paste it over. But if you write out sandstone, conglomerate, mudstone, and coal, I love that. I know you didn't copy and paste. Um, and I know that you're probably going to retain that a little bit easier. Okay. So that is your 250 surface geology.
It also asks you to pick a city and town or town in Washington. I don't care where you pick because let's zoom out here. You can only pick Washington in the Washington State Geology Portal. And in a minute, you'll see why. Oh, look, because it doesn't go to Idaho, it doesn't go to Oregon, it's only Washington. I don't care where you picked. Maybe you went to a town with your family 20 years ago. Well, I think you're all 20, so 10 years ago. Um, and you loved it and you want to know more about the geology. Maybe you're from somewhere in Washington. I don't care. Pick a town in Washington and run with it. And it will ask you to describe the geography and topography. Remember, we're thinking of elevation, so you might have to go back to LIDAR for this. Um, and then finally, it's going to ask, what do these labels mean? Because it asks uh, you to open the legend tool. So let's go over there. And essentially, the labels are. Oops, there it is. Quaternary, Pleistocene, more Pleistocene. Oh, but they're going to change to Pre-Devonian, Mesozoic. What do those words mean? Why don't you tell me? Um, but make sure you have it on uh, the surface geology when you're looking at the legend here, okay? No, oh my gosh, I have so many things up right now. Okay. Do, do, do. Oh, it went away. Activity two is volcanoes. So let's think about volcanoes here. Let's go back to table of contents. Um, we're going to unclick surface geology because this is our top layer, which means that anything else we click is going to be hidden by surface geology. We're going to go to volcanoes and we're going to go to volcanic hazards and volcanic vents. Doesn't really matter. You can put both up. The volcanic vents are big. So I think you're going to start here. Eventually you will get to volcanic vents, but all of your volcano information is going to be under the big tab volcanoes. At least that's relatively easy to remember. Um, so you're going to answer these questions. You might have to go back to some LIDAR. I just want to make sure I go through everything with, for you guys so you don't get lost on something. And again, oh, math, you'll have to do some math. It's not hard. Nobody panic. Um, we, we're opening this a whole week early so that you guys have the opportunity to go to our, our office hours this week or even um, next week, right? Because you'll have two weeks to do this lab. So you'll have the opportunity to ask questions in our office hours. So don't panic if you don't understand something. Email us. Go to our office hours. We're here to help, okay? Okay, activity, this is technically activity four because we've skipped activity three, remember? I'm gonna make sure that these are labeled. I don't know why there's no titles here. This is your mass wasting, do, do, do. So remember, this is your land side. These are your rock sides. Here's your OSO. I took a picture and took the liberty of putting it in your lab so you don't have to go to the poster. Although I do also have the posters, um, as PDFs in your files here in lab six. Uh, but the thing with LiDAR is it takes, I think that it takes a second to really be able to read it well. So I really wanted to show you guys, here's where Oso is, okay? The actual town, the actual city. Here is a river. I don't know if you can see this like uh, sort of fluvial uh, parallel structure here. This is a river. This was the river that flowed right in front of Oso. And then here's what happened afterwards. So you can really see, I wanted to put the two pictures together. You can see what happened, right? Here's the hill slope. Here's the hill slope after. The other horrifying thing about this scenario was somebody modeled it. Some geologists modeled this entire scenario and it took, I think under two minutes. I know it's a very, very short amount of time. Uh, I think under two minutes for it to go from this to this. So it was 10 o'clock in the morning um, in April or March maybe. Uh, it was a it had just been really rainy. Take that into consideration when you're thinking about landslide situations as well, because that's a really important factor. So it had just rained a whole bunch, um, and it was ten o'clock in the morning, and this happened in under two minutes, and forty three people died in this scenario. So um, this is probably one of the biggest hazards in this area. We live on a lot of slopes. Um, so that's your mass wasting. 
activity. And then glaciers, finally glaciers. Um, and this is going to take you to this link here, which I already have up somewhere. Where did it go? It's going to be under. Tonight. Oh, please. It is. I pulled it up. I pulled it up. This one. Okay, this is your glacial landscape poster. And if you recognize it, it's because I have posted it in the actual lab class as well. It is on the old, it's not really a whiteboard, but it's it's like the, the screen board off to the side. If you walk into the room, it's against the same wall that the door is on. You'll see it, it looks like this. It's this beautiful turquoise color. So this was the last glacial maximum. This is, this is my thesis. Uh, this whole area that's sort of, um, covered in turquoise. This was once what's called the Puget Lobe. So this was a lobe of ice that came off the Cordilleran Ice Sheet, which was um, the ice sheet in its entirety that covered Washington, Idaho, and Montana. Um, and there was a particular lobe that came through the Puget Sound. It scoured out the Puget Sound. And actually, we think this, this lobe came down at least 25 times in the last two to three million years. So there was a lot of glacial scouring that happened in this area. It's really, really cool. Um, and it leaves behind uh, evidence that it came through. And some of that evidence is really, really clear. You can see, can you zoom in? Yeah. Um, you can see these parallel scourings. Uh, I call them striations. This poster actually does not have striations on there. Um, if you zoom over to this side, it calls them drumlins, I think. Yeah, they're called drumlins. Um, but they are elong elongated markings that are parallel. And that's because what happens is the glacier will actually pluck rocks um, from Canada, from wherever it's coming from, essentially. It will pluck rocks on the bottom of the, the glacier, so it will hold these rocks. And so it scours against the bedrock and scrapes it, because the ice doesn't do any scraping, right? Ice isn't as hard as rock, but the rock will scrape, scrape against other rock and make these parallel striations um, which is so cool. So you can see how the ice sheet sort of flowed. And then down here, it kind of uh, came down in this direction, kind of more uh, towards the west and east, where these ones are more north to south. Um, same with over here. These are really north to south over here. Um, so we, it kind of fanned out, essentially. That's what the ice slope did at the bottom, was it sort of fanned out because it got thinner. So it was able to sort of spread at the bottom here. So they're really, really cool. There's a whole bunch of other um, other things you can look for as well. But I think the striations are going to be the most clear. And what this activity wants you to do, oh, the web, web page was reloaded because it was losing energy. Well, of course it was. Um, was it actually wants you to turn back on uh, LIDAR. Remember how we said that glaciologists love LIDAR? because you can see every little crevice and crack in the geology. You might have to wait for this to load or get unfuzzy. There we go. Um, and it wants you to go to a specific island and look at that island. But what I really want you to look for are those striations. Full disclosure, they're definitely there. But I want you to see them. And I want you to um, make a note that this is how, Pu this is one of the things that scoured out Puget Sound. Um, there are actually a lot of geologic factors that created Puget Sound, um, but the glaciers really contributed to that. Um, and if you come to the extra credit field trip on the 19th, mm -hmm. I don't have my calendar in front of me, but I'm like 9% sure it's the 19th. Um, it's a Sunday. So if I have the day wrong, just know it's the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Oh God, I don't know. It's Sunday. It's gonna go somewhere. If you come to that extra credit field trip down at Boulevard Park, I'll get to show you some really cool evidence of glaciation down there. So um, highly recommend, it's gonna be fun. So that is your lab six. Thank you for sitting through this. Hopefully you can run this at like two times speed so you don't have to actually listen to me talk for 30 minutes because I'm pretty sure. So it's a 30 minute video and I apologize. Um, otherwise, let me know if you have any questions. You can email me, um, you can email your TA. This is a really fun lab. Um, get to know this program. It's a really, really cool program. And uh, you'll have two weeks to do it. So just have fun. And uh, we'll see you for lab seven. Thanks, friends.